I'm Emma Van Horn, and I'll be sharing today's First Chapter Friday. This week's First Chapter Friday is Janitor's The Curse of the Broomstaff by Tyler Whitesides. This is the third book in the series. This is a little about the book. The secret society of janitors with wizard-like powers succeeded in the battle, but now the stakes are even higher. The Baru of Education, Maintenance, is after Alan Zumbro. And this time, the evildoers mean business, deadly business. Spencer, Daisy, and their little team of rebels must, must find the source of all the magical gloop and destroy it before it can destroy the world as we know it. No small task with the BEM and its monster toxides at their heels. It's a wild and dangerous ride, as Spencer's friends follow the trails of clues all the way to the hiding place of the mysterious Adirons, guardians of a secret landfill. What they will discover there will change the fate of the rebels and quite possibly that of the world. Now I'll read the first chapter. The Clean Way, Chapter 1. Miss Nature's chalk squeaked against the board, and Spencer shuddered at the sound. The teacher stepped away from the chalkboard so the students could see what she'd drawn. It was another story problem, and this time there was a pie chart to go with it. Spencer sighed and picked up his pencil. He finished the problem quickly and still had time to double check his work. Class was different without Des. Spencer found that it was much easier to finish his assignments with, without the bully's grubby hands poking him. Des's absences under any other conditions would have been a great relief, but Spencer was troubled. Three months had passed without any word from Des. Under Slick's persuasion, the bully had stayed at the New Forest Academy, but Slick was gone, long gone eaten by his overgrown grind. So what was keeping Des from coming home? Had the bully given in to the BEM? Was he truly one of them now? Glancing around the classroom, Spencer saw that he was practically the first student who finished with the pie chart problem. Daisy sat a few desks away, her nose an inch off the math book as she scribbled out her numbers. Spencer sighed as he thought through the rest of his day. It was Max's fourth birthday. Spencer's mom would be busy planning a party for his little brother. They'd have cake, but Max would probably slobber when he blew out the candles, getting his germs all over. So Spencer probably wouldn't eat any. Life had actually become quite boring lately. If it weren't for his bronze visions, Spencer would feel completely left out of what the rebel underground was doing. After, <clears throat> ever since Walter had escaped through the woods and around the new forest academy, Spencer liked to check the old on the old word lock, just to make sure everything was all right. Spencer's hand drifted to his left pocket. He knew he shouldn't do it not during class, but a quick checkup would not take long. Spencer could be back before Miss Natcher sliced the pie chart. Spencer plunged his hand into his pocket, his fingers slowly lowering to the object concealed there. It was an old high school swimming medal that his sister had bought to, at a yard sale. It wasn't gold or silver, it was third place, bronze. Spencer had closed around the cold medallion. He tried to keep a casual gaze forward, but almost immediately, Miss Natcher and the chalkboard were blurred away in a blizzard of white. It spread, consuming his entire vision, until it fell away, point by bl blinding point. He stood in a parking lot for only 52 minutes, west of Walter Elementary. Spencer tried to remain calm, 
His power was still new and in many ways uncontrollable. Even though he had been able to increase the length of his warlock visions, Spencer still didn't know who he would be spying on at any given moment. He had hoped for a glimpse of Walter, but the man in the parking lot was too broad and tall. Spencer knew at once who it was. The man was Mr. Clean, the president of, B of the BEM and the most mysterious of the three warlocks. The name was clearly an allies, which prevented Walter from discovering his true identity or anything about Mr. Clean's past. Spencer had seen through Mr. Clean's eyes like a number of times. The warlock usually at his BEM office in Washington, D.C., causing everyone nearby to cower in fear. But not this time. What was Mr. Clean doing in Idaho, standing there on the parking lot of a prison? The sun was brilliant, sparkling on the mounds of snow at the edge of the parking lot. The warlock looked down, his breath billowing the frosty February morning. He was wearing a long white lab coat, but as his glove hand moved the label aside, Spencer saw something was attached to his belt. It was a large bat black battery pack with a dial on the center. Plunged into one end was a thick orange extension cord. Mr. Clean's eyes followed the trailing cord. And as he looked over his shoulder, Spencer gasped. Not three feet behind the warlock, crouched against a gigantic fifth. The not three feet behind the warlock crouched a gigantic fill. The rodent's face was downturned, its hideous buck teeth gutting crooked from its small, slobbery mouth. It was purring softly, a deep-throated, a deep-throated sound that caused the deadly sharp quills on its back to rise and fall. The other end of the cord was nestled into the monster's dingy fur, plugging into a gray flesh near the spine. The filth's eyes were half closed, and the beast pulsated lazily as energy flowed through the extension cord and into the creature's body. The warlock did not seem at the least bit terrified that an overgrown toxide was breathing down his neck in the open parking lot. In fact, the broad man reached out and gloved out a gloved hand and stroked the creature's muzzle. Then, with a blur of movement, the man left into the air, his wab cloak swinging wide. To Spencer's surprise, the warlock landed atop the huge filth, strutting like a war horse. The filth made no reaction, completely contented, apparently due to the energy coming from the cord. What do you think will happen next? If you want to know, check out Janitor's The Curse of the Broomstaff in the library.